You cannot achieve your dreams if you do not take personal responsibility for them. In this episode, I am going to break down the three levels of personal responsibility with the last principle being the most important. So let's dive in. You are listening to the Bridging Impact Podcast, transforming leaders on and off the court with host Coach Furtado. Without further ado, let's dive in. So we're talking about personal responsibility and the number one principle for personal responsibility is to follow through with your word. I've had a ton of athletes in the past year tell me how hard they're going to work and that's great, right? We all want to win, we all want to get more play time, we all want to make the team, but what are you willing to do to make the team? Are you willing to sacrifice your ideal role Are you willing to sacrifice time with your friends? Are you willing to sacrifice, right? What are you willing to sacrifice? And that's not even what is most important. The most important part is following through with your word. It's okay if you don't want to win a championship. It's okay if you don't want to put in a ton of work to potentially not get the results. That's fine, right? But if you really want something, you have to follow through. And number one, it's going to give your self-confidence when you follow through with what you say you are going to do. Let's say that I want to become a great shooter. Well, if I want to become a great shooter, I'm going to participate in the Shattober Challenge that you can go find in the description below. But in reality, you want to make sure that you are getting up X amount of shots a day, X amount of shots, you know, going hard, right? Could be 250, 500, depending on how much time you have, what level you are at. So you have to be committed. You have to say on Saturday, I'm going to shoot a thousand. And if you follow through, you shoot a thousand, you build that confidence with yourself, right? Once you build that confidence with yourself, that confidence will help you and your team, right? Actually being selfish and taking responsibility in that way helps your team because when you become a better shooter your team becomes better right everyone getting better individually ends up rising the tide of a team right if we all stay the same we don't work on our game maybe we like each other but if we don't level up our game we can't level up our team success so that is number one is following through with what you are say you are going to do, that is going to honestly separate yourself between 90% of people. Whether it's you know people in my life that are like adults that I've connected with, I've connected with a ton of people that say, oh, I'm gonna be a basketball trainer. Well, that's great, right? But you don't follow through with what you need to do to actually turn it into a business. That's why you can never have it become a, a, a real business. It's a side hustle for you. Same thing for some of the athletes, right? I have, you know, one athlete in mind, you know, he wakes up every single morning, right? He's incredibly hungry. Actually, I actually have a couple that come into mind. Um, he was cut, but the one I have in mind, he was cut from the basketball team last year, and he is literally willing to do anything, not only to make the team this year, but also get play time, right? To continue to level up his game. When he gets his, his butt kicked, right? He comes to me, hey coach, how can I improve on this skill, right? He's hungry. You got to be hungry, which leads me to my next point of you have to take responsibility and you have to have humility, humility. It's always the best player's fault. And this is really a hard, you know, kind of concept and insight and lesson to grasp, but it's always the better player's fault. And, And I'm as guilty as ever. I've blamed things on other people before, whether it's in my own relationship, whether it's when I was a a teammate on on my basketball or baseball teams, even as a coach, right? If I'm a coach, if I'm a really good coach, I want to take responsibility for everything, right? Every single loss, that's on me, right? We didn't prepare well enough in practice, right? We didn't prepare well enough in the off season to get them physically in shape, right? For basketball players, right? For me, right? That turnover, that was on me. I rushed that pass. I didn't make that the pass great, right? If they drop the pass, right, it's on me. It was too fast, right? There are obviously always going to be points in time where we have conversations with our teammates where, you know, they may need to take a little bit more responsibility. If they are showing up late, 15 minutes late, you shouldn't be taking the entire responsibility. They should be, 
You are responsible for showing up on time. Not your mom, not your dad, right? You. And that's that's the biggest thing is you have to have humility. We're going to make mistakes, right? Are you going to be the person that says and blames another person? Because guess what? When you blame your teammates, you take, you know, there's a trust like let's let's imagine a piggy bank. Every time you, right, follow through with something, every time you take responsibility, you're putting in points, you're putting in dollars into the piggy bank. Every time you blame someone else, right? You are taking dollars out of the trust piggy bank. And great teams have great trust. And if you want to play at the end of the game, doesn't matter what sport, you have to have your coach's trust. If you're always blaming people, making up excuses, not following through, well, guess what? You're going to be on the bench while other people that the coach trusts will be in the game. And that hurts. That sucks. Right? So make sure that you, number one, you follow through. Number two, have humility and admit when you make mistakes. And the last point, which is the most important one and honestly the hardest one to accept is, you know what? No matter how hard you work, there is no guarantee that it's going to work out. Right? But it's still your responsibility to work for that championship, to work for that playtime, to work to make that team. Right. For me, it's my responsibility. Right. So let, let's think right now. I know for a fact that the program that we have is significantly better than some of the programs in the surrounding areas. And I can say that with confidence, but it doesn't mean that we have more athletes that we're serving. Number one, we haven't been around for as long, but it doesn't mean just because I feel like we have a great program doesn't mean that, that you know, parents and, you know, customers think that. Right. I, that that's not a guarantee. There's no, I, I can't say, hey, hey, my program is so great. Everyone should be coming to my program and be complaining about other programs. I'm not saying that the other programs aren't, aren't good as well, right? But they, if they have the athletes, they have the athletes, right? It's not, you know, a parent's responsibility to take their kid and, and be like, really trust me. It's my responsibility to build a great product, a great experience for athletes and parents for them to want to be a part of the program. That's my responsibility. It's my responsibility on the podcast or this YouTube video, if you're watching, to bring great value. It's not your responsibility to listen. No, you don't owe me anything. You don't owe me anything at all, right? Like, it's a privilege that you are listening or watching this right now. And I think that's where we kind of get it twisted. You know, I've got it twisted as a creator. I felt like I bring so much more value than I see other creators doing, right? And I've been, like, very jealous, right? And, and I'm sure that you can imagine yourself sometimes, too, where you feel like, hey, you know what? I'm a better player than this guy, and this guy or girl is getting more play time than me. What the heck, coach? Right? And, and I understand that, right? I've been there. I've been sit, I've sat on the bench, right? I've been cut when I feel like I could have maybe made the team. But you know what? We don't complain. We get better. And it doesn't mean you don't have a good conversation with coach, right? You should always ask, right? And, and I'm going to bring back to the same player who was cut last year by me. I cut this player. He came to me right after he recognized he was going to be cut. And he said, hey, coach, what can I do? And a year later, right, he's making the team. He's probably going to get play time. It's, not, it's a little early on the season, so I can't make any promises, right? There's still a lot to play. But because of his effort, because of his curiosity and wanting to learn and wanting to get better, right? He is going to make the team and get play time, right? And it's going to be his responsibility of whether he gets to be a, a finisher in the game, right? He still has to earn that trust, and that's going to take time. But I want to go back to another point, right? And I believe I brought this up in a previous podcast. It doesn't matter. I could work relentlessly hard for five years training to be an NBA basketball player, a professional basketball player at that. And I could go try out for the Lakers. And LeBron could sit on his butt for the next five years. And he would smoke me in that five years. Smoke me. Wouldn't be close. I would, coach, I put in five years. LeBron's been sitting on his butt. I deserve that spot. No, he's better than me. He's going to be better than me. So, and this is the hardest one because, right, I'm a trainer and also a coach, right? So the trainer role, right, we are kind of this motivational where we develop individual players into, you know, so they can get more play time, they can make more of an impact for their game. And then I put on my coach hat, right, coaches, we want to win, like, right, like I, I, I focus on development too, don't get me wrong, right, I'm a development coach, but when it comes to high school basketball, I want to win, 
So what am I going to do? I'm going to play my best players. Sometimes my best players are just naturally more gifted than the other people that are putting in a ton of work. And that's just the unfortunate truth. And that's what we have to take responsibility and understand that we may not get guaranteed playtime. But it is your responsibility that if you do want that playtime, you have to put in that work right? Nothing in life is guaranteed. It's a risk, right? There's no there's no guarantee that this podcast is ever going to take off and I'm ever going to get to interview my favorite guests like Sean McVay or John Gordon or, you know, I'm not, there's no guarantee that I'm ever going to be able to do that. There's no guarantee that my basketball and leadership training program is going to be a success. There's no guarantee anyone's going to want to, you know, join and, 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 you know, be a part of my app, right? No, no, you, no, you don't, you don't deserve or, you don't owe me anything, right? You owe me nothing. And I think that is what we really need to focus on is no one owes us anything, right? We have to go out and earn that. We have to go earn, right? Whether it's a paycheck, whether it's playtime, doesn't matter. Go out and earn it. Appreciate you all for listening to this episode of Coach's Corner on the Bridging Impact Podcast Network. I'm Coach Ritado, so Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like comment share subscribe on apple Podcasts. subscribe on spotify we got great interviews every single wednesday and you get to hear me rant and ramble on fridays the wednesday episodes those are the best ones those are people that are way smarter than me and so sometimes i try and take a little bit from what i learned there and then pass it on to you so have a wonderful day evening morning whenever you're listening to this coach Rotato out